this video we're going to talk about the dynamic settings of the template library. The dynamic settings is uh, used to accurately create template components, uh, template lines, different things like that inside of the template library. It's a small little button looks like this at the bottom of your template library window which we're going to look at here in just a second. It's kind of like the MicroStation AccuDraw tool in that you can set up uh, what type of precision key in commands that you want uh, to control the line work that you're putting into the template. So this is what the dynamic settings looks like. Um, the X and Y is where you're located inside of the template library so if you move it around this information will change. Your step is kinda like uh, how much your mouse moves when you're actually drawing a line out there so you will be moving every point one uh, up or down inside of that template library so it's almost like a snap you're snapping to every point one uh, distance inside the template library if you're creating new information you're allowed to give it a point name and we'll take a look at this inside the program but all kinds of different MoDOT uh, style point names are listed in here and you can also give it your own uh, and then the point style what kind of a point are you placing so if you're placing a curb maybe it's going to be uh, a curb point style maybe it's going to be uh, something different but you can get that point style out of there apply a fixes if you are pulling things out from our template library and placing them into your template so if you had let's say an edge of pavement on the right and an edge of pavement on the left and you drug that out to mirror it if you do apply a fixes you can set that up to where it does an LT prefix or an RT prefix depending on if it's left or right this area right here is what you're going to use as your precision key in command so there are several different ways to change this one and they're listed right here XY is an absolute XY so somewhere inside our template library uh, if you wanted to start uh, say that at top of an edge of pavement over 12 foot uh, and then have it go another 10 foot then you would start your XY at uh, 12 comma 0 and that would be over straight 12 foot and then your endpoint could be over 22 comma 0 and that would be another X location if you wanted to go up then you would do maybe a 0 comma 10 and that would go up 10 so that's your XY uh, DL is a key in delta coordinates from the last point placed Okay, so it defaults to the dynamic origin if it is the first point of a component so the, the delta is from the last point that you placed. HS is a horizontal horizontal delta slope. Okay, so you got a distance here and a slope. And so when you do the HS, first you would key in how far you want to go horizontally, comma, and then a slope. Same thing here, vertical and a slope. So you would key in how far up you want to go, and then the slope of that. then key in delta coordinates from a dynamic origin so you can set a dyna dynamic origin uh, and then you're going to be based off that dynamic origin so your origin uh, doesn't have to be at zero zero it can be a different location and so your delta coordinates can be based off of that okay so let's go look at it uh, in the actual drawing so I'm going to come in here and take a look at this this is the template library that I have open right now I've got one just for our class data and let's say that I want to create a new template and use that dynamic settings okay, a lot of times we'll have a folder in here and just to show we're going to be doing this in the class examples or exercises as well we're going to create a new folder underneath it here so I'm just going to right click on the very top and that'll create a folder in this right underneath the root 
new folder and I'll just call this class okay once you create your new folder all you have to do is right click on it and do a new template now, a new template will give you a blank template with nothing out here you can still slide around you can see there's nothing on there um, you've got your vertical distance and your horizontal distance dynamic settings is located at right down here at the bottom this little bitty icon along with your view tools the last option in there is your dynamic settings you can also get it from the tools pull down dynamic settings so let's look at it from the icon so I click that little icon and this is the dynamic settings box first thing to take a look at down here I think is this set dynamic origin that is a button that probably really shouldn't even be in here uh, you do not want to hit this unless you want to change the dynamic origin of your template okay a lot of folks will come in here and they'll fill out this information that they want to start a line and they'll hit this set dynamic origin and it'll change the origin of your template and that's not necessarily what what you're wanting to do so I, a lot of times I'll just kind of ignore this button right here personal preference okay <clears throat> um, in the dynamic settings usually we'll set our steps to 0.1 and 0.1 and if you're creating something out here uh, this component we have to be able to create a brand new component so right now I've got that steps filled out the way I want it let's say that I want to draw a component out here so the way we do that is we right click in the window add new component and we can do any one of these that you were wanting to do uh, we're going to probably look at a lot of these in the exercises especially in condition uh, constrained so I'm put in a constrained component and then down here at the bottom it's going to give you a name that you're going to create out here so I'm just going to do uh, EOP so I'm going to create an edge of pavement the feature definition you can search for different feature definitions that that we have out here um, we have all kinds of different ones uh, you can do top mesh bottom mesh template components template components is probably where I'm going to find uh, my pavement and then you can do uh, if you're doing asphalt or concrete so let's say I'm doing concrete pavement I'll select that and now out here on the screen you can say where do you want to start this now if I I can zoom in close here and try to get to the center of that uh, but that is what we're looking at here with the uh, precision key in you'll also notice the XY here changes as I move around so even if you get right on it you'll see XY is zero zero okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the XY that's in here. So if I do a, a drop down and go to XY, okay. and I'm going to give this first one a point name. And we've got a bunch in the list here that you can choose from. Um, this could be maybe the center line point at the top. So I can do a concrete TCL. And that'll be the name of my point feature definition for this one uh, we could come out and try to pick up a uh, one for design uh, maybe a roadway and gonna have to use the little down arrow here and we'll do a EOP new okay so our EOP new is going to be our feature definition that it's going to create for this and what that does is if you use this uh, in a corridor uh, it'll know that that's an edge of pavement out there and it'll create lines based on that edge of pavement you could apply fixes if we were doing right and left um, if you wanted to do that what you would do is go up into the tools area go to options and in your apply fixes here you would go ahead and turn that on and then put what you want left in the left LT underscore RT underscore for that and then you can click OK 
I like to double check to make sure that that goes on and then I'll also double check up here in the options and make sure that that stayed and it looks like it did okay. so I've got that information in there I haven't named my well I did name my component but it went away so I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and then in our XY here I'm just gonna do a zero comma zero and enter that in and once you enter that in it's going to go ahead and start your line work there okay so we're at the center line so it's not a left or a right I'm expecting that when I come out to, to the right it's going to put an RT in front of whatever point I use for the next one so we're gonna come down here and we're gonna change our point name so we've got concrete still and we're on the top and we're doing an EOP so I'll do concrete T EOP as my name linear feature will still be the same apply affixes this time I'm gonna do a common one that we use a lot which is the HS and that's just your horizontal and slope so for this one the way that you key this in horizontal first so let's say we're gonna do a 12 foot lane and then we'll do a comma and then we at that point actually um, we are doing 12 inches or 12 feet we're doing 12 feet if you were gonna do 12 inches you would have to put the inch mark if you're doing feet you don't need the foot mark okay so maybe make a note of that if you didn't put an inch mark after this it would go 12 feet which is what we're gonna do here but if you needed to go 12 inches then you put the inch mark then once you get that in there you hit comma so we're gonna be going over 12 and let's say we're gonna go in negative 2 percent okay we hit enter on that if you zoom out it's ready to place the next portion of it okay so we could do a uh, we could do a, a straight down line if we wanted to if we were done with the component we can just right click and hit finish okay now you can make a full depth pavement thing just by going all the way around it but you can see here it put the RT concrete TEOP out there for us okay that's kind of one way to deal with this dynamic settings the other thing that you can do here uh, is you can drag components out onto the screen so we're going to do that real quick just to show you the difference between drawing your own and bringing one on the screen okay so if we wanted to uh, say take a look at our concrete information so we've got components we've got pavement new we've got pavement only concrete and then we've got some options in here and you don't want to double click on these you just want to single click on them and it'll show you what that looks like down at the bottom now if we wanted to put another lane out to the right of this uh, you can left click and hold and drag that out onto the screen that green point would line up with the red one and you can drop it off and you can see it put the RT on all of that you can see it's got an, a one out here because we already used the RT concrete TEOP so it put a one at the end of that next one because you can't have two of them named the same okay let's say that we want that same thing on on the other side okay. what I would do if I wanted exactly the same thing on this left side is I could do it inside of the dynamic settings I can right click in the blank window add new component constrained we're going to do concrete TCL which should merge those points but if it doesn't it'll just put a one after it so we're looking at concrete TCL edge of pavement new this time I'm just going to come out here and left click on that green point that's already out there and it'll turn white so I've got that started and then we can go and change this to concrete TEOP Okay, and then we've got again horizontal and slope. So I'm going to do that one again. This time to go to the left, we're going to do a negative 12, comma, negative 2 
percent and we're going to enter that in okay now you'll notice that that one went up okay it's going to the left and it's going up and that's fine I'm going to show you how to change that right now so we're going to go out here and right click and finish that so one thing that you'll find in these templates is that a lot of times you'll key in exactly what you think is right. I think I might have put in 2% instead of negative 2. Okay, And if I did that, all you have to do is come over here and double click on that red point. Oh, I did have a negative 2 in there. You'll find this with templates. If something goes the wrong direction, all you have to do is change that sign. So I'm going to change that sign to a get rid of the negative and then we'll go ahead and hit apply on that and it'll go down now when I keyed it in if I keyed in the negative two you would have thought that would have went down but not necessarily the case in the template library so what you have to do is just put in what you think it should be if it goes the wrong direction come in here and make that change we're going to talk more about this dialog box in another video uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and close that out now to get that uh, same template same component over here on the left side we're going to come out here to the concrete pavement we're going to hold on hold on to it with the left mouse button and drag it out and you see it's going to be on the wrong side so while we're coming out this direction and holding the left hit the right mouse button at the same time okay mirror would put this on both sides of the template and reflect we'll put it on the left so we're going to reflect this and you'll see it'll flip it and then we can come right to the end of that T left concrete TEOP and we can, once the point turns white we can left click okay so that's kind of how you use the dynamic settings uh, these steps that we had out there like I said before it's kind of hard to tell unless you're really zoomed in uh, but if you were to go out and try to add a new component, uh, you can see now that my mouse will uh, kind of snap every point one. The further in you zoom, you can see it's going to snap to those different grid spots. And that's why it's jumping like it is, because it's going to all the different locations. Okay, so that is uh, the dynamic settings tool and how you can use that in operation with creating... Uh, your own template if you wanted to or your own shape out there like I said these lines that we drew in here they could be continuous shape or a closed shape they don't have to be a single line uh, you just keep on going all the way around like we were doing okay so uh, once you're done with that all you'd have to do is save your your template library and close out